Welcome to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into newsletters, you're going to see it right on the right-hand side. You just hit that subscribe button. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months. Uh, come on, get up there <laughs> for six ninety five, which is a savings of one uh, hundred ninety nine dollars at twenty two percent. You get it for a year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred ninety three dollars or thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee, folks. Okay, so you know you get a highly volatile uh, market out here. A lot of great opportunities for trades, whether they're long and or short. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I think it's uh, going to be interesting times. You know, when, when Powell began raising interest rates, my concern or focus then was all the what, 12, 13, 17 trillion worth of U.S. denominated debt uh, by other countries out there. So as our currency is moving higher, you know, it is the king, even though it's pulling back a bit uh, today and on Friday. Um, you know, I didn't expect that the first world of print was going to come from a U.S. bank. So it's going to be kind of, so it, it seems like Powell is really in a corner now. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Particularly because if we get a, what's happening, folks, is that the CPI is coming out tomorrow. So if they can't raise the rates, okay, trust me, anything that is hard asset, hold on to for your life because they're totally. going to go up beyond belief, folks, okay? Totally, you totally. Know, they, and, you know, yeah, it's pretty intense, man. There's no doubt. It, it yeah. is, it is. So so I thought that what we could do here is because we we're talking about A to B equals CD patterns. I wanted to share with folks my experience with that pattern. So shown here, I've got the S&P 500. This is showing the A to B equals CD down pattern during the 2008 financial crisis. So we're talking about financial crisis today. I thought, hey, let's go back and reminisce a little bit. But there's a lot that we can learn from it. So as we can see here, this is an A to B equals CD pattern that went beyond the one to two price projection level. Um, and uh, the monthly charts for me, and I think for everybody else out there, they eliminate the noise. So it makes identifying the A to B equals CD pattern much easier. So if, if folks are just learning about this pattern, whatever time frame it is that they're using, if they're struggling to figure out what to use for swing points, just keep going up uh, higher time frames. If you do that, you eliminate the noise and the patterns, the swing points will just stick out much easier for you. Something else that folks should learn, Tom, to master the A to B equals CD pattern are Japanese candlesticks. So shown here on this monthly chart for the S&P 500 are the bullish reversal candles. And in, in the case of an A to B equals CD to the downside, I'm looking for bullish reversal candles. So this here shows that uh, when the S&P made its uh, bottom back in 2009, it was a, a bullish uh, piercing candle that helped to confirm that the A to B equals CD pattern was complete or very likely uh, completed out there. So we always begin looking for bullish reversal candles once the A to B equals CD pattern reaches the one to one price objective. That doesn't mean we just go ahead and buy that. We, can, we, we continue to look for bullish reversal candles. So in March of 2009, when that bullish piercing candle formed, um, you know, from that point in time, obviously the markets have moved higher. But the important thing for people to see on this chart is that there was no reversal candle at the one to one level. So there was no reason the cavalry hadn't arrived. There was no bullish reversal candle at the 1.27 level. There was none at the 1.618 area. So it's important to understand the pattern, but also how does the pattern communicate to us? So as you know, as you mentioned, uh, the as subscribers to Mastering Probability News letter service get eight or nine different hours of the tools that I use well one of those tools is the A to B equals CD pattern uh, and a couple of my patterns also like the Rhodes momentum indicator they require a bullish or bearish reversal candle to confirm the pattern so it's a very cool thing in the way that we integrate the way that markets communicate uh, with us so they've got access to that so folks that are learning this pattern out here uh, feel free to subscribe to Mastering Probability you can do it for 29 days it costs you absolutely nothing so I thought we could do then, Tom, is kind of move into where we at today. So we took a look at the 2007, 2008, 2009 financial crisis. We looked at the A to B equals CD down pattern, tried to share with folks uh, when does that pattern actually complete. And that takes us to today and take a look at the four U.S. equity future contracts. In the upper left-hand side, we've got the ES Mini, the upper right-hand side, the NQ. Lower left is the uh, Dow. Lower right is the, uh, is the Russell 2000. The NQ is the only um, 
equity future contract that still has a Gartley buy pattern. Now, I, I'm using the term Gartley buy pattern, folks. Any Gartley pattern has an A to B equals CD in it. That's where there's a large move to the upside, and you're looking for an entry point, and a Gartley buy pattern is one of those uh, patterns that provides us with that uh, with with that ability to, to enter a long position. Turns out that it was a buy the D point pattern that formed inside the NQ on March 2nd. And it formed this, and I've got this little a little yellow line. It's the very right-hand corner chart. It says Gartley buy support, 11,964.25. That's a number that everybody should have on their pad of paper for the NQ. And this is the June contract that we're taking a look at. If price closes below that level, that is likely going to trigger a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. In the case of the NQ, the next price target would be about the 11,548 level. As you mentioned, the ES Mini today, it completed the one-to-one. -one. A to B equals CD to the downside out here. But if we take a look at this, this is the left-hand side, Tom, that we're looking at. We notice that price is really on the left-hand side of that C to D leg. So the way that I use this tool, you, it's really important to maintain the exact same angle from A to B as C to D because it provides us with a ton of information and a lot of that is described uh, inside that uh, workshop uh, that, that I've done. So we have A to B equals CD patterns. The NQ has already confirmed it's by the D point unless price closed below 11.964. In the ES mini, what we're looking for is some type of bullish reversal candle. The same for the Dow, the same for the Russell 2000. Those instruments are not going to bottom until or are not likely to bottom until they form a bullish reversal candle. So this makes it easy for everybody that's in the audience. Now, people may not be looking at the equity future contracts. I suggest that people at least gain access to it, not necessarily have to trade it because our patterns are really about price discovery. We can draw, I can draw the A to B equals CD pattern inside the S&P 500 for the cash contract out here. But as you know, we could get some type of market turn that would confirm what we already need on the uh, in the overnight hours or early morning. And so that's why we take a look at this, why I take a look at the equity future contracts out here. So the market should continue to move lower until we get those bullish reversal candles. Now, one of the reasons we're looking for a bottom, folks, is because the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator is really in the extreme oversold condition. It's down below minus 250. Once you get to minus 150, you're in an oversold area. So folks are subscribers to the newsletter. They see this chart each morning. They know exactly where we're at. And we should expect to see at least some type of oversold bounce form, you know, in the next uh, couple of days out there. Another reason to be looking for a bottom, as you mentioned, too, uh, uh, that the U.S. dollar index is pulling back. Right now, it's trading below the bottom of its daily profile, which is at 103.77, or at least I believe that it is. And if it trades below that or close below that, odds favor, we're going to make a move back to the 102.31 level. The reason that, that is important is because of the correlation that the U.S. dollar, directional correlation that the U.S. dollar index has with the S&P 500. In this case here, I've got the ES mini up top. Bars that are down below the zero line on the very bottom, they tell us about an inverse correlation. Now, this is set for five days, so we can see that that five days correlation here has kind of gone off track during the last uh, couple of days out here. But we still have a U.S. dollar that's going to move lower, and that should help to fuel at least some type of bottom and bounce inside the equity markets. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters. You can see Master Pal Billy on the right-hand side. Hit that baby, and you are off to the races. Steve, you have a great one, safe one, and we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank Take care. you.